This is Joseph Coco, I'm at Imtech 2019. We're here at the end of the show, actually. I'm here with Chris, if you could introduce yourself, please. Yeah, what's going on, everyone in internet land? This is Chris Saber from Night Sabers. All right, so Night Sabers, is, is that an artist studio? We normally talk to artists here on this channel. No, you need to be are paying attention. Are you a different type of artist, perhaps? Not, yes, not as visual. We, uh, we are a rock and roll band. We call ourselves more of a nerd pop band. It's like acoustic based, nerdy, fun stuff, sing-alongs. We have songs about video games, anime, comic books, Marceline, all kinds of crazy stuff. Awesome, so it fits perfectly into this demographic then. Oh yeah, definitely perfect. These are the best things. The conventions are the best ones for us to play. Um, so did you have a table uh, selling your stuff at the show uh, this year or were you just performing at the show? We did not at this one because we, weirdly enough, we were kind of side men performing with another band that plays at these called The Slants uh, and they had a table. Uh, but usually when we're at these things, we're always in the artist alley hanging out with all the great visual artists. So we love them. It's the, be it's the best thing. <laughs> Healer Room is fun. The artist alley is where it's really at though. Fantastic, we love to hear that. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, so, uh, you you normally work these types of events or you do all kinds of events? Are, are you based in Nashville, I guess? Yeah, we are question? We are um, based on the planet Earth now, um, <laughs> because initially, you know, we might have been from somewhere else, but Nashville-centric for the most part as well. Yeah. And uh, yes, we do play these. We also play club shows and everything else that every type of band does. But again, the anime cons, the nerd events, they're always a good focal point. That's where your core audience is, would you say? Yeah, I would definitely say so. I mean, yeah, we've the made people so many... who are watching for your new releases and things like yeah, that. I mean, yeah, we've, we've made so many great fans and friends and connections with other bands and even visual artists and the voice actors and the cosplayers and everything that it's just, it's, it's fun, it's great. Okay, and when you are tabling uh, these sort of events, do you normally have a table in the artist alley? That's what we prefer, actually. So nine times out of 10, we do. Um, occasionally we're in the dealer room and we don't like that as much personally because while we're we are the biggest band in the world we know we're still on a lower level to a degree so sometimes you get lost in the mix there when you have these guys with all the crazy anime love pillows to the ceiling <laughs> and you're just kind of there but in the artist alley it kind of I think we stick out a little better because you have still all the great art and everything but then you're like well what's this is this a band they have CDs for sale and they talk to you a little bit more it's great definitely so I know a lot of the way artists get people's attention, certainly in larger artist alleys, maybe not so much at MTAC, is they've got uh, big prints and things like that. They've got uh, tables rising all the way up to the ceiling and everything. How do you compete with that? How do you draw someone over to to your table where they can yeah. buy albums and other ephemera? Really, One thing to? that really helps is that we are a band, so we can have an acoustic guitar or a ukulele or something there and draw people in from straight up literally playing the music right there for them. So nice. that's a huge thing. I mean, I've went as far as to go up and down a line at some big line, like something for the cosplay contest, with a guitar, writing improv songs about people's costumes that are in line on the spot and then telling them <laughs> what band I'm in. So, you know, it's just a great thing. It's all an improv to, you know, lowest level, not lowest, but most guerrilla marketing you could think of of doing yeah, it yourself. Yeah, down to earth, you know? you're here with these people, so you're yeah. gonna you're gonna talk to them, you're gonna be with them, you're gonna show them you're a nerd. Exactly, and we even yeah. do that when we have like our panels, because we do panels at these outside of our show, you know, on topics related to things, and usually we'll play some music during that and bring a couple CDs to sell, and you sell a couple more for the day, it's great. Okay, uh, and uh, what, what are your sales like at anime conventions? Um, do you... Are, are you selling as much as as uh, visual artists, or is it uh, more trying to build a, a long-term audience with um, uh, yeah. music? It varies. I mean, there's not one answer. It's kind of like anyone in the artist alley. You got one show where you, you know, do good to make to break even, but then you do one show where you're like, oh, I walked away and made a couple thousand today or something. You know, so it var it varies. Nice. It's so hard. And as far as comparing us to other ones, I mean, we're never going to probably sell as much as some amazing visual artist that you know has prints from every current show for example yeah but that's okay you yeah, know that's it's, fine it's a lot hard of these, to compete with that in general yeah a lot stuff. of these guys have followings and everything too and while we're working on that i understand that they do so you know it's just it's a give and a take kind of thing okay and when when you perform the events i assume you tell people hey um you know you can buy our music afterwards we're going to be the artist alley and things uh it's similar to artists doing a panel um, how many people actually come up to you afterwards and say, you know, I heard you play, I, I really like your stuff, uh, and they talk to you for a bit and want to buy from you? Is that a common scenario? Yeah, or that's um, like a, a hope for some shows it works, some shows it doesn't? Yeah, it's a, it's a big hope, and again, it varies on the show, because if, if the con has a thousand people, it's going to be different than a con with 10,000 people, obviously, at the end of the day. Yeah. But we even go the step further, because we always set up a merch table in the room we're playing, or... Sure. In the case of like Ilm Tack here, it'd be fine because your room you play in is right over here and Artist Alley's right here, so you can almost stay there. 
but it's good to have a visual presence in the room you're playing. Say, you can go back to the room after, at the back of the room after the show and buy our record and we'll sign autographs, take pictures, whatever you want. We'll make babies with you. It's all good. <laughs> Hopefully that happens after the show and not, yes. not during the show. That's um, true. <laughs> what a show that would be. Uh, so, what's your music like? Um, like, I know you said it, it's uh, nerd inspired. Can you tell us yeah. a little bit about it? What some of your inspirations are? Where we might yeah. be able to hear hear you play and that sort of thing? So we, when we play live, typically we're a two piece, a two piece acoustic act. Uh, myself there and Zoe Saber, who's off, you know, saving the galaxy right now. That's why she's not here. She's on her spaceship. But she plays ukulele and is an amazing singer. I play guitar and I'm an okay singer, but I'm good at speaking to the crowd. And okay. so live, it's a little bit different than even on the record. The record's a full band production and varies from, we call it nerd pop, but it's kind of rocky, kind of power poppy, you know, lots of sing-along, lots of energy. I always say it has like the speed and like energy of punk rock, but played on acoustic instruments. It's probably a good way to put it. And again, all of our subject matter are a lot of nerd related things. I mean, we literally have a song called Video Games, Anime and Comic Books, for example. And we also <laughs> have one called I Love You Sushi. So while not exactly geeky, a little bit different than your normal whatever that's playing somewhere you know all right uh and if if other artists uh wanted to sell at the sh um sell at an anime convention uh other uh, musicians would would you recommend that they pursue that as well or you think uh, it's something that falls out of just playing shows oh yeah no i recommend it highly i mean especially like with ilm tech here related we have made so many friends and so many bands over the years i mean everybody from some bands like i mentioned the slants earlier they're a huge act now we played with them we met them here uh, back okay. in the day p lander z is another one that's like amazing the proto men here being nashville based are a huge one in the scene there's yeah. a huge scene for all of this it's just a lot of people don't realize that it's there you know and then you have some people that do this like someone like yom c chris who doesn't play conventions really but is a like nerdcore rapper so yeah i think it's good to bring all these here because it's a melting pot and the people want music here. I mean, you want to be able to dance. That's why the rave is so successful every year. Yeah, I mean, people walk day. around all convention playing their own music. So it makes sense yeah. that you'd have people who are professionals who can actually perform at the show. And exactly. yeah, the, well, it's not officially called the rave, but yes, the electronic yeah. dance party. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's definitely a long line for it. People anticipate it. So yeah, yeah it's, it's an important part of the show, so I feel like, that people don't necessarily talk about enough. Um, or, uh, how how representative was it in the program guide? Um, like, was your name as prominent as as some of the other? Sure. Like, well, again, we weren't like the that? actual guests this year, but the oh, slants right. who we played with, they were. Yes. Yeah. 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 They were one of the focal points. And when we played here before, because we have, it's always the same thing, same marquee type of name. You know. Okay. Now some conventions do it differently too. I mean, something massive like Dragon Con has like multi levels of guests. You have your big VIP ones and then your lower level and what have you, which is fine because. At something like that, they book bands like the Misfits before in Guar, who have huge name recognition outside of the scene. Yeah, obviously they're going to be more important to the general public than Night Sapers at the end. Yeah, of the day. someone might actually come to the convention just to see just, them, yeah. whereas um, it's more likely someone will see you're playing here and get excited. It might be another reason they come to the convention. Yeah, I mean that's one thing we've always said is the battle with bands is that the bands at these are almost more of an added bonus than a draw, unfortunately, for better or worse. But yeah. ideally, if you're that added bonus, people enjoy. They'll invite. They'll want you back and ask for you back, and then ideally you come back as a result so it Definitely. works really well uh, Chris where can we find your work online and also what shows you're going to be playing in the area in the near future yeah um, we don't have a whole lot booked right now but we're focusing on a lot of content creation we have a lot of music videos coming out soon okay. one that we worked on even this weekend Awesome. Uh, which is gonna be really cool. So if you go, is there then, footage from Intact? There's on a, there's <laughs> Intact footage on it. Yes, we have. I don't nice. want to reveal too much, but there's cosplayers in it, and it's fun. Okay. And uh, that will go up on our YouTube channel, the Night Sabers Band YouTube channel. So you can find that. You might want to link that below. Even I'm doing your work for you there. <laughs> I definitely um, will. And then of course we're on Instagram under the same thing, Night Sabers Band. Uh, same thing on Twitter, Facebook, what have you. All the normal ones, we're there. Bandcamp as well. We're on Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music. All of these other ones, I don't even know what they are because DistroKid puts you on all of them. Tons of them out there. Go listen to us on Spotify. Get us that point zero 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 one cent for a full those, stream. Those royalties are amazing yes. in the music industry now, I hear. <laughs> They're um, a whole nother level. <laughs> Buying physical product is always the best way to support bands still to this day, Definitely. us included, so yes. Yeah, and, and coming out to live performances. Yes, right? yeah. exactly. Uh, okay, and uh, finally, I, I wanted to ask, where did the, the name uh, come from? Oh, it's super nerdy. <laughs> uh, so, 
I don't know if you remember the show or not from the late 80s Bubblegum Crisis, but... I'm familiar with it. It's an anime. Okay. It's an anime, and it's about this these crime-fighting girls that, like, you know, they put on these big robot suits and they fight crime. One of them is a punk rock singer at the end of the day as well. And the name of their group when they're fighting crime is Night Sabers, except, except spelled with K-N-I-G-H-T, and we changed it to just night, like sky, N-I-G-H-T. Okay. And a lot of people think it's like a Star Wars reference now, and I didn't really realize that going into it. That but I'm like, was, oh, it's far nerdier, that actually. That was my hunch, but <laughs> I, I definitely wasn't sure about that. And that's why I wanted to ask you, and I'm sure it's a question everyone asks you. So a few people I have gotten the reference. officially on the record. Yeah, a few people have gotten the reference, and it's usually like the old school otaku guy that's like older than all of us, and he's like, is this about that bubblegum crisis? Yeah, it is. <laughs> so, yeah, we want to write a song about it someday, maybe. Yeah, that, that would definitely help. All right, Chris, thank you so much. I hope you yeah. had a great MTAC. Uh, I had a great you MTAC. had fun and um, did, did well in your, uh, your performing. I did. All I right. hope you did well, too.